Welcome to Stamscaping 101. I'm never finished with my scene until I'm finished with it in complete, complete form. I did all the compositions in two videos ago. I colored them in the previous video. Now here I am at a point where I'm doing a little bit of uh, gel pen and paint pen embellishments on here. Um, these are all real similar compositions, of course, um, when we're talking about these grassy ones right here. And that was the entire point of it. I was just doing some speed coloring, except for this one right here. But um, coloring alone can really bring out and set the tone for a certain emotional quality within a scene. And sometimes using a lot of different colors can bring out you know, you can establish kind of a certain vibrancy and depth in your colors. But sometimes, you know, all those colors in there are rich, but what we're losing is an element of kind of a sharp, sharply focused object, okay? Now, I don't want to go back in here and just start stamping new forms, although you could do that. Sometimes I'll put extra little bushes or something like this in my toned areas, okay? But what I like to do is I like to bring in these little gel pen highlights. In this case, in most of these scenes right here that I've done, they kind of represent some wildflowers in the meadow. I wouldn't be adding them in if I did kind of a brownish, you know, summertime type of thing where everything's already dried out or something of that sort. But in a green meadow, you can see, oh, the different colors. There's some blue, uh, not blue, but uh, white, orange, and little... Uh, lavender dots in the background representing different types of flowers. You can see where it kind of, in my opinion, it kind of brings the uh, scene to life a little bit. I put a few little highlights down here on the uh, on the uh, curvilinear road on some of those um, textures. This is a scene that I added um, some of this distress ink yellow mustard seed. <laughs> because I wanted to do kind of a meadow filled with uh, yellow flowers. This one looks really crazy in terms of the uh, finish. There's another one right here, and again, where I've used some of that lavender um, paint pen down here. White, orange in here. But the lavender is a perfect complement to the lavender going on in the sky up here. It's not necessarily ref supposed to be reflecting, you know, that color of the sky down in the flowers, that's just supposed to be a lavender flower or a lupin or something of that sort. Okay, but you can see where that meadow really comes alive. Um, more of it right in here. Okay. Here. And in this one right here, I don't have, this is a moonlight scene, so I don't have a bunch of those colors in there, but little white little flowers maybe that open up in the moonlight, I don't know. It just looks kind of fun. I like doing these little types of touches and open spaces. If it's a nighttime sky, maybe less moonlight or something, I'd put stars up here, you know, so they're just some little kind of dots of whatever they represent. It could be highlighting, it could be kind of, you know, you know reflected light over kind of a icy uh, surface or whatever, flowers, whatever, whatnot. If it's in the sky, it's stars. If it's on the uh, ocean surface, it's that specular light reflecting some of the lighting, or it could be kind of the splashes of the water at the base of a waterfall. But those little sharp little uh, entities, whatever they represent, can really add some nice visual interest into a scene, and specifically in areas where Kind of, you know, there's an area in here that isn't quite so interesting, but if, as soon as you put down little sharp points of focus like that, um, it could really bring an area to life. Now, a lot of times, you know, when you look at these, you know, and if you look at it closely, it gets a little bit too busy, okay? Now, in the next video, I'll show you that's why I do something with pigment ink, um, because it gets a little bit too crazy at times with that texture, and I go a little bit overboard, maybe. Um, but pigment ink really comes into play, and it kind of finishes the scene off really nicely with some soft, illuminated areas, which mellows out 
all of that really busy texture, okay? So one more uh, video to go, but this one was specifically on gel pen highlights and features within the scene, okay? And I'll do a dedicated uh, pigment ink uh, video next. Okay, you know, when I do those stamp sketches, just working on compositional layouts in black and white, I should know that um, I am going to be finishing those off at some point in time. Usually not the same day, but as it turns out, that's the way this one's going today. Um, I have some scenes down here that they look okay as far as the coloring scheme goes, but um, I want to kind of finish these off a little bit more complete in my eyes, okay? Now look, I was looking at this scene right here, this photo. Look at this. This app is called Wordscapes, perfect for stampscapes, right? But it's kind of a nature-based, you know, uh, kind of figure out the word type of game. But look at, they have a lot of, um, each level of theirs is about, it's featuring, um, I know, a kind of a different natural theme that's why they call it wordscapes. The, the words don't have anything to do with nature, but look at this beautiful meadow here full of these large and small kind of yellow flowers. We can take a look at this too in terms of reference. You can see how these flowers kind of cluster together. And as they move back into the distance, it's much more dense. Maybe the color kind of scheme changes a little bit from kind of a lighter yellow to darker one. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get something like that, but I thought doing something like that on this scene might be kind of interesting. We won't have kind of as deep a space as the photograph because we don't have kind of a worm's eye or, you know, a view of this, but um, I don't know, we can put something larger in here. And the scene's, you know, a different time of day as well, but I thought I would brighten this up a little bit, you know, with uh, some of this yellow in here, since I'm going to be adding in those yellow flowers anyway. Uh, maybe we can get some kind of brighter um, or, I don't know, warmer tones into the scene before going into it with some gel pens, okay? And that's how I'm going to be largely finishing off a lot of these scenes, okay? We'll talk about some embellishments with uh, those pens, okay? We'll go something like that. Maybe we'll go even brighter. We'll lay down a little bit more. Okay. Or maybe I'll lay down a lot more. I don't know. Just to kind of brighten up those kind of those little hills in there. Okay. And I don't know. Let's add some to these trees. Okay. Maybe down into the road a little bit. Just some kind of brighter, brighter tones, I think, just to kind of liven it up a little bit, especially with that yellow that I'm going to be applying in here. Now, one of the things I like to do, I, saw, I really like um, layering textures. I like layering colors, but let's go for a little bit more texture. This is the tiny rock stamp. I already have the pebbles down here, but I thought, um, some of these uh, tiny rocks would be a nice addition in terms of a textural kind of a, I wouldn't call it a textural statement um, because it's going to be too subtle for that, but um, I thought it would add to things. I can add this out in the, uh, the grass area as well. It just becomes kind of an additional texture, kind of adding a little bit of depth to it. Now this is going to dry lighter than how it's stamped out. I don't know, for some reason dye-based inks dry lighter than what they look like when they're wet. And pigment inks I find dry darker than how they look when they're wet. I don't know, go figure. All right, so I might use this again for, well, here. We're doing kind of a mass production kind of style of stamping here. Let me just use this um, on all of 
the seams that I'm going to use it on. Okay, this is just using stamping it out in walnut stain, which is a pretty nice color. I always like walnut inks and uh, doing kind of like sketching with it and whatnot. Not for stamps, but just for drawing purposes. Okay, is that texture down there on the road? Yeah, that's a little bit of depth. Textural depth, I guess textural, maybe not depth, but richness. <laughs> Sometimes the most kind of, I don't know, tiny, seemingly insignificant stamps end up being some of my favorite stamps. I really love the uh, tiny rocks image. Again, because it it's just so applicable to uh, so many different areas, just in terms of establishing kind of a additional texture, textural depth. Okay, it's all out here. I didn't do it on this one. I, I think I'd do it in a different color on this. Or would I? Yeah. I was just thinking about getting lazy and just using this kind of brownish tone on there, but let's do it in a different color for that one. Alright, see that right on here. I'll throw it here, maybe up in here. As I do it, I'm kind of doing it in a full saturation in the foreground, so it's darker than as I move more distant with it. I kind of just do the ghost stamping where I'm stamping out maybe the third or fourth generation of it so it goes light, so it goes dark to light. scene so we're saying that uh, kind of a cool light is uh, reflecting off the uh, off the uh, areas space within our scene okay, okay. a little bit of texture to start off with or additional texture, I should say. Okay. Much brighter. Okay. Now, let's approach our scene here, okay? Uh, let me try this yellow one right here. I don't know. Might be too yellowy. I don't know. We'll give it a shot. Maybe some white can be used in here as well. Let's give it a test, okay? All right. This is a Uniball Signo yellow pen. And let's do a little compare their contrast type of experiment with this against, let's see, this is a, uh, I'm not looking for that, it's a gold, so, it's a gold shuttle art glitter pen, I'm not looking for the gold one, uh, I mean glitter pen, a big gigantic shuttle art collection, okay, here's the yellow. Most of these I haven't used before. That one's probably super, super fluorescent in color. Okay, that one's more of a true yellow. Let's give it a shot. Okay, this one's the Uniball. Okay, 
cutting these down, clustering these little flowers together. Normally with highlights, I, I don't put as many in my darker areas, but these aren't supposed to be highlights. They're supposed to be little flowers, so maybe I, you know, I can use a little, you know, a bit more of them in my darker areas to just reflect the idea of a uh, I don't know what type of flowers those are, but clusters of flowers, okay. So as we look at them from a distance, maybe they're a little bit more clustered in together. I just kind of read as kind of texture as opposed to individual flowers. putting a few of these like on each one of these little mounds here. So little hills, I guess. It's kind of bringing certain areas to life a little bit. Spring is here in terms of, uh, at least in this scene. If you're in an area that's had a long winter um, and you're tired of it, I hope you get some nice springtime temperatures soon. types of things really do, or really can, change the spirit of a scene. Kind of lighting sets the emotion for a scene, in my opinion. How you, you know, the lights and darks, the hue that you use, more than the compositional structure, because after you do the compositions, you can really kind of take your scenes in any kind of direction you want to from kind of a visually emotional standpoint, but um, those colors really do kind of alter um, the setting. Okay, here's the shuttle art. It's a little bit more fluorescent and bright. Maybe I'll add some of those. It's a really fluorescent color. It's almost green. Maybe that's because as I add this down, the colors underneath are showing through. It's either that or it's kind of mixing with the color underneath. I'm not really quite sure. Sure looks green though um, to me, but that's okay. We can go for a little bit of variation. Yeah, it's not quite as opaque, but that doesn't mean I don't want this color it's different. If it's the same, I don't, you know, there's no reason to use it, but um, in this case it seems to be, uh, yeah, it's just kind of translucent or almost transparent, the color. So it makes for a nice little variation, I guess. Here's white. It's the uniball white. And let's just add a few of these in with that yellow 
just for a little bit of variation again. Let's add some little highlights down on my road. And some of these little rocks down here. We have the um, kind of the darker little um, feature in the form of those tiny rocks that I just stamped out. Now I kind of go back in and I add kind of a similar texture in the form of these little highlights. So it's like adding the reverse or complement to the dark, okay? Something like this. Pretty extreme, kind of, kind of a really vibrant, um, almost too much so. But that's where my pigment ink comes into play, which I'll use. All right, let's see right here. Let's try something different. Let's try um, a different color. Let's not go yellows. One of the colors that I like to use a lot is white for my little flowers. Um, I forgot what they were called, pearly everlasting or something like that. You know, these little white little um, flowers wildflowers. Oof, isn't the uh, sound of music or something like that in the, you know, maybe a more mountainous area. I should do some big mountains back here, but the, <laughs> you know, the Edelweiss. I don't know, when you add this down to this little area, it, it kind of becomes something a little bit more inviting. It's you know, for that horse there, um, putting these, you know, real kind of a alive um, environment for it. It really sets it up nicely, you know, in terms of the spirit of this uh, scene. Okay. Present my own kind of lighting down here. Something like this. Okay. You see some background. That. I'll do some larger ones here. Just, you know, kind of making a larger dot. Yeah, just for the sake of, uh, I don't know, kind of visual depth. Okay, something like that. Let me go back to this one. This one's too yellowy. Let's, I like that white in that one. Let me add some of these larger, or I don't know, just more little white dots interspersed within that yellow. Okay, tweaking it. That's one of the things that working on several kind of scenes all at one time, it, it was kind of interesting. But, um, you know, instead of just working on one thing, you can kind of learn from one and apply it to the next immediately. You don't have to wait for the next scene that you do, you know, um, a day or two from now. All right, well, this one right here, I don't know if I... Let me do something right here. Let's apply some of these highlights to um, some of these peaks right here. Okay, maybe there's some snow up on these peaks, so let's make some of those a little bit whiter like this. <laughs> See, doing it this way, um, you don't have to kind of mask off, you know, and retain some of the, you know, the white of the paper or whatnot by not inking it up. If you put some ink over it and you want to put snow back into these areas, you, know, you can always just use a, a white gel pen. 
Now, snow is, I don't know what it was, it was something like 80%, it reflects like 80% of light, uh, there's some statistic like that, and kind of more dirt or whatever reflects, and it was, I think it was in the teens, so you can make that snow up there really quite light, like that. Make it a little bit more irregular. It's kind of hanging down in some areas. So, okay. Okay, so a little bit more kind of snow up there. Eh, let's see what this one looks like. Eh, it looks okay. I thought maybe that would stand out too much, but I think that looks pretty good back there to represent snow. So maybe this little path right here I can kind of, eh, I don't know if I like it illuminated like that. Let me wipe that off. You can just wipe off this uh, ink if you don't like what you see. Let's put a few little highlights down here on this road. Something like that. I wasn't quite sure if I was going to put some of this down here because it is fairly dark um, as is, but yeah, I think it, I think it can use a little bit of this. So there's a little bit of a that pearly, everlasting. Um, personally, I like to use um, a little bit of a kind of a purplish um, type of a color within my grass. Okay, you can use gel pen too. Uh, this one's the uh, Sharpie paint pen. in a set of pastel colors. Now this this kind of violet here, lavender it's called, um, you know it, it's a certain value you know in terms of light and dark so it kind of it's a, it's a similar value to the green it's a different hue but it blends in with the green fairly nicely so it's a little bit more subtle So you can see that it kind of brought that area to life. And if let's see if I can show you the purple or the lavender right up here and here and here. You can see it kind of in the grass, but when we back up, it's a little bit more subtle. So it's you know you get that tinge of it in there, and that lavender kind of matches well with these colors down here. And lavender and green look well. There's a little bit of a pink up there on the mountain, so, you know, it looks pretty good integrated in with that. Going back to this one right here, I like that lavender. Let's get a few little, kind of more subtle colors, because there's often more than one type of uh, wild flower, right? But see, I'm just kind of clustering a few of these together. But yeah, I mean, this makes for a really uh, kind of 
kind of happy looking um, setting. So you really kind of brings your area to life. It gives it extra texture and depth within that given space. You know, there's kind of a flower kind of coming out at you over the top of that green. Reaching up into the sunlight, perhaps. Hmm. That one got crazy with that uh, red pink right there. All right, they are coming home after uh, a nice long day. Walk over to somewhere, hike, the local store maybe. Maybe that little boy got a ice cream or something like that. Could be with a man. That could be a woman too. He's out with his uh, someone going for a nice little walk, maybe a nature walk. This cow's loving all the uh, sweet grasses, you know, that the rains provided. them together like so. Areas do become, you know, fairly rich with the amount of ink that you might lay down on them, but they also kind of come, become a little bit muddy looking at times, you know, even though the coloration is fairly rich, there's just so much color laid down sometimes. And it it looks better when I think when it's contrasted against something nice and crisp in that area, like these little flowers like so. See how it just kind of brings everything to life. It looks like little, those little pinholes of light, I guess you can kind of say, even though it's not, you know, light coming through, it's just reflected light off of it, but it gives it kind of a, I don't know, kind of a more inviting look. You know, I, I love using these gel pens and as things like stars when it's in, in the sky, but it's more of just this kind of shimmer, this overall shimmer that can be achieved, be it a star or a reflection, or it could be, in this case, uh, represent some kind of flower um, in a given space. Okay. See that there? Flowers. No flowers, you know. <laughs> it really, I don't know, it, it, sometimes it can really complete, you know, given area. dots are fairly reflective in terms of light because this is a fairly dark scene at this point in time with the colors that I've used but this is a good way to go back in and reintroduce um, a light element within that darker space darker area I guess right there. Just a little bit um, happier, friendlier. You know, like little kind of stars or something like that. Within this given space. Yeah, the 
those textures, okay. Similar textures to the uh, tiny rocks in terms of the shape of this highlight. some kind of flower that open only opens up at the during the moonlight probably some moth uh, pollinates it and I don't know if these are flowers out here or not I guess they could be now this one gets you know pretty dark so I'm not gonna put too much of this in the darker areas yeah, even though there's you know some pretty strong moonlight uh, reflecting off of uh, whatever these would be. So, that being said, I'm going to go in with this blue one here, this blue uniball signet. And, hmm, this one's fairly dark. Let me see if it shows up. Yeah, it shows up okay. I'll add in the darker areas um, some of the blue one so it won't stand out quite so prominently in such a dark area area, okay? Alright. So there we have that. Okay, there we go. So that kind of makes for a nice texture. Um, if you want to get a little bit more detailed in terms of um, some lighting on things like objects like this, we can take this pen and in some lighter areas kind of uh, bring out certain features within a uh, you know, given structure. And I'm just kind of doing this on some areas that are already kind of light but have a little bit of tone over them. Maybe in some areas I can kind of bring it out a little bit, again, with just some straight white. This house, again, is by uh, 100 Proof Press. See so little features here and there. Yeah, with this one right here, I think I'll just leave it. There's this fence down here, though. Maybe a little bit of that fence is kind of catching yeah, some light like that. I think on this one right here, this one would be a, a perfect opportunity. And actually, all of these, because I colored them all the same, but um, this would be a perfect opportunity for some additional kind of little, little lavender or lupin or whatever. Lavender colored dots, though. Down here, and this really uh, kind of relates to the, uh, the color scheme. That was established in, through the coloring process. So that looks really good in there. So we're bringing in some of that lavender from up here, right? It's down there. But if you look at this from a distance, though, you know, it's not like, oh my gosh, this is filled with like purple, right? It's kind of more subtle than when you get closer and closer and closer. Right there, you can kind of see that this purple kind of a you know, lavender details, okay? And they kind of blend in, you know? They're kind of part of the uh, color scheme.
one's really alive. Um, sometimes during the springtime in certain areas in uh, California. I'm sure in other areas too, but um, these are the areas that I know, but there's like clusters of, uh, you know, uh, California poppy, which are orange, and uh, you see it clustered with a, I think it's lupin, and then there's these white flowers, but you can see the entire hillside sometimes just covered with, uh, you know, clusters of all those three colors really harmonizing together. It's really spectacular. Okay. is like, uh, we'll make him Black Beauty. Okay, I'm just going to add in some extra tone. I'll do it in blue. To that horse right there. It looks a little bit better, you know, just having some color on it. Um, let's see these little characters down here hiking. Why don't we do um, blue for the uh, adult here? Okay. Yeah, this little 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 guy is wearing uh, some blue pants or something like that, and kind of a striped T-shirt or something, or red T-shirt, tank top. I don't know, something like that. Oh, here's this cow here. Eh, they're in a lot of darkness, so I'll just do them blue. <laughs> I don't know what tone they would be, but uh, these pens, this is an alcohol pen, makes for a really nice uh, um, coloring. Uh, whatever mechanism. For scenes. And I say that because it doesn't really blend in with the, uh, the surrounding areas. It doesn't smear with the surrounding areas. Okay, this is a brownish gray. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of a tone down on my uh, cabin with that. Uh, that's a little bit standing out a little bit too much. I'll do, do is go back in and uh, kind of blend that out a little bit. Okay. Let's take a go in with a lighter pen. Is that lighter? Yeah, kind of. It's not light enough. Here, here we go. Apricot. Okay, I'll go in and just kind of blend this in a little bit more. Okay, it's got a brownish tinge. And let's create a little bit of a shadow below this horse, okay, on the on the uh, road, dirt road. When I was the darker one, then I'll just kind of blend out the edges a little bit. Like so, okay. Kind of anchors it down, don't you think? By having that shadow underneath there. So we're saying, okay, that figure, that object is, you know, creating, um, you know, some sort of relationship with the uh, surrounding areas in which it's found. Okay, putting this little fence into the ground a little bit more. Okay, putting a little bit of shadow. Okay, I talked about um, um, kind of enhancing forms and making it look a little bit more like volumes in a previous video. 
and I talked about just kind of reiterating what you have going on in certain shadows in here, okay? That's what we're doing here. Let's hit the shadow here, okay? So there's two characters walking, but they're not really, you know, creating any shadows, so just going in and adding something below them, and here. Add some of this into my cabin as well. A little variation of tone, a little bit more specific in certain areas. Rooftop. Go into uh, some different areas on my trees if I want to. You know, I can kind of come in and just emphasize certain shadow areas of the tree. Sometimes the uh, sponge applicators just aren't conducive for really specific areas. It's good for the general. And, I mean, you can get a little bit specific with them by changing the angle. But, you know, this is kind of the ultimate, you know, very specific, you know, tool for coloring, you know, really small designated areas. That was the green. Just kind of going and blending that around a little bit with uh, this apricot. Apricot? Yeah. A little bright up there in those trees. Add a little bit of variation to those trees, okay? This is kind of a, eh, a little bit of a lighter green. Eh, not that much, though. Looks like it's darker than the tree. I'll add it in anyways just to create a little bit of variation within that tree. Okay. Kind of adding it a little bit along the top surfaces, okay? Then what I can do is I can go back into it. Um, let's try the white. Add a little bit of texturing. If it's on that tree, then we have to kind of add it in maybe not all trees, but definitely all trees that are kind of close to it. Otherwise, it looks kind of strange in terms of a texture on something. Okay, so there we have it. There's a little bit more variation on that tree back there. Okay. That's the way it looks a little bit more from a distance. You can put some little highlights on these trees if I want to as well. Just to create a little bit of a relationship between that tree and that tree. Okay, let's see. What is that red there? Do I have some red on my finger? I think I touched that red there and I put a big dab down here. It looks like blood in the meadow. Uh, that's another thing that these pens are really good for. You can just cover up something that you don't want. Okay. These figures filled in a little bit more. Some more kind of specifics. Okay, here's this horse. Let's make this horse a little bit maybe brown or something like that. Just for a little bit of a change in hue. Okay. Some areas up here in the mountain if you want to kind of, you know, bring out some of those uh, shadows a little bit more. Hit those areas with a little bit of pen work. Get very specific in terms of um, shading areas.
this is getting really kind of specific, but it's fun. I'm just going in, kind of adding some shadows on some of these little pebbles down here. I'm trying not to work too much darker than um, the color that's already been laid down. So maybe in a lighter area I should be using a lighter one, I don't know. We can do the same thing here. There's some kind of these rocks on uh, this roadway down here, curve a linear road. for that horse. Let's a little of this brown to it. Maybe a two with this. Let's see how it moves brown to that cow. Brown cow. Okay, put some uh, kind of brown pants on this uh, hiker. My grandchild. Okay. So you do one thing on one, and it's like I, I want to do it on all of them, so I'm adding these kind of uh, little shadow details down here. I don't know, not, not a ton of them. Now this one's a little bit lighter, so this is showing up a little bit too much. So let me go in with my lighter one and just kind of blend that out a little bit on some of those shadows using a very light, subtle color, subtle in terms of applying it over all these tones that are already laid down. Okay, get a little bit of shadow along that edge of that road right there. The distance Maybe around this corner right here, I can add a little bit of shadow. See that uh, little bit of shadow right there being cast by the uh, this little mound. And then get a little bit darker over here too. pretty good. <laughs> so I'll do that on this one as well. Huh, this one really doesn't stand out as much as that one for some reason. Maybe I was blending out some of the other browns that I've already laid down. Go along this one like so. Before, certainly in terms of a textural um, standpoint. 
standpoint. Okay, let's see what we have here. I'm looking at these six here in terms of a kind of a visual interest standpoint and trying to assess if uh, I don't know if we want something more this one right here and this one especially in the meadow area I think we can use a little bit more kind of excitement or something in, in the form of uh, brighter color. Let me see if I can hit that with, um, let me see if this orange stands out. Talk about those kind of California poppies. Let's see if those will look okay in here. So this is using uh, the Shuttle Art orange. Uh, it isn't quite so so it doesn't really stand out very much at all. It stands out if I put it over a much lighter area, but when I'm putting it over the green, it kind of just blends in a little bit. It's not too bad, though. I'll put them kind of in its own area, as opposed to, like, you know, over the top of purple or something like that. Looks okay. See it over here, it looks more like orange, and over here it looks completely different. Sometimes you see these types of flowers growing right alongside the road for some reason. It's like almost like maybe more water kind of pools there or something like that. See that? Put it right alongside the road. It's just a little bit of a tinge of a orange until you kind of look at it really close, and you can see those dots there. So maybe something is growing. It's a little bit different, you know, right next to your road. Okay. excitement. This sure is a mass kind of a production kind of method because <laughs> whenever I do one on one it's like I really feel compelled to do it on all of them if it looks good you know. So I don't know maybe this is like a, a series or something like that you know rather than saying it's just the same thing over and over again when you say it, it's a series then it, uh, I don't know, it just sounds better. Okay, there's that orange. It looks better in some than others. <laughs> but the ones it looks pretty good and I think it looks really good. Uh, 
this one's had enough, I think. <laughs> this one didn't mellow out as much. I, I thought that Distress Ink would really kind of fade out in terms of drying much duller than it, than it is right now, but it's still pretty vibrant, okay? So anyways, that is some, oops, some different embellishments on here, okay? This one is just the white and the blue. Okay, but most of them. And these are all, like I said, the, you know, this is kind of a mass production kind of methodology here, but you see all those little dots down there? Now, it look, it's looking kind of crazy with all those dots, but I have one more step in the process that will kind of mellow everything out. So it's, I guess when I think about it, you know, in terms of my process that I'm kind of working in here. There's this process of kind of building up tone and kind of adding some visual interest and excitement and making it kind of, I don't know, um, something really stand out, okay? And then I add things over it and it kind of mellows things out a little bit and just in terms of maybe some colors that kind of make some tones look a little bit less vibrant and more kind of earthy maybe and then I add something into it that looks kind of kinetic and busy and whatnot and then I kind of push that back again and kind of mellow it out and I try and find a balance you know between all these different elements not necessarily in the compositional part of it, but when it comes to color and uh, intensity um, and a range of intensity, and a range of values and whatnot, different things kind of happen along the process. Now we've gone into something that really can, it can be very, very subtle, but it can also stand out quite a bit. Like that's kind of busy, you know, if you look at this really closely. But in the next step, what I'll do is I'll show you how to apply um, pigment ink. I don't know if I've ever done a dedicated video just for that, but this will be a perfect one because I have a lot of scenes to, uh, to do it in. I don't know if I'll finish every one of these. I don't want to do it on every one of these in one video, but I'll show you how um, some little subtle um, touches of pigment ink. This will be really good because I'll add some in some of these scenes and I'll leave, you know, some of these scenes just as is, so we can do a little comparison contrast um, as far as that technique goes. Okay, so anyways, um, fun little tones in here. I don't know, I guess I didn't really use um, that gel pen too much in terms of highlighting that was just all kind of bringing stuff together in, you know, this little meadow here, but, um, you know, you saw it here in the... Uh, this mountain being used as snow, but I, it can also just be lighting, you know, if you kind of do a little bit of stippling like this and kind of transition those dots off like so, you know, it can be um, snow or it can be something like highlighting. Uh, in this case, maybe a little bit of both, okay? So it's really great for highlighting, like on a water surface or something like that. If I put down a few dots, instead of it being flowers, in this case, it can be kind of highlights or that specular lighting on the water surface. So these pens are really uh, pretty formidable um, tools when it comes to your scenic stamping. Okay. Okay, done with that, and until the next step, which will involve my pigment ink right here. Okay, thanks for watching.